welcome to Fast API Fastly, a quick introduction to a nifty project. I'm Mark Rice. I'm a senior software engineer at Gardent Health, and I'm really excited to talk to you about Fast API. Some of the goals are I want to introduce you all to myself and then to Fast API. Uh, I'm going to tell you why I love it. I'm going to show you why I love it, uh, tell you how I've used it, and just generally kind of fa uh, hype Fast API up. Um, a little bit about myself. Uh, this is me. I'm Mark Rice. Uh, I'm a dad of two. Got a couple of dogs. And, you know, just kind of have a whole mess of people in and out of my house uh, with a lot of love. And uh, I'm a D&D &D player because dads have to have hobbies. I really just have, like, one hobby. Um like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm a bioinformatics software engineer at Garden Health. Uh, probably mostly a software engineer and less of a bioinformatics person, but uh, it means that I get to sit right at the inflection point between science and technology, and it's really fun. Uh, I'm a proud Pythonista and a co-organizer of Pinensula, and I'm really excited you guys are watching today. So, a little bit about Fast API. Um, it's a lightweight Python web framework uh, with just the right amount of batteries included. I mean, to me, it's like the Goldilocks choice of web frameworks. Not too hot, not too cold, just right. Uh, Flask is great. But, like, you got to go buy a weird battery that you probably don't have. Uh, it definitely wasn't included. And, uh, you know, it's really amazing for what it does when you need something fast and simple. And then there's tools like Django, which has, like, amazing batteries included. But it's, like, literally the whole box of batteries. Um, so... I think Fast API comes with just enough to make some great web tools, uh, in particular, as the name implies, APIs, with low effort and high rates of return. Um, it's built on top of some really great projects like Starlet and Pydantic. Uh, the Pydantic is for data validation, so when you make a request, uh, it needs to be able to uh, be serialized into a Pydantic uh, object. And that's really cool for someone like me who wasn't very uh, well versed in the web world, but like I know objects and it was very exciting for me. And so the web, the framework is relatively new. It was announced in 2019, uh, but for something that has been only out for two years it is it is feature rich uh you know it does what i need it to do there's examples of it it's got great documentation it's just all around a good project um i'll show you the site later and in the chat i will make sure that uh, i put the documentation there but also if you google fast api the docs will come up So a little bit about why I love it. I mean, I've obviously kind of been hyping it up for a few minutes here, uh, but it's simple and I'm kind of a simple man. I'm not too smart. Um, it's fast as heck. It works when I need it to do. It's snappy, uh, you know, as long as your code is snappy. Uh, it comes with free docs. It's really cool. I'm going to show you that because for me, this was 50% of the selling point, which is maybe a bit, you know, of hyperbole. Uh, but did I mention it's easy? So let me show you. Let me show you just like a quick example of what a fast API, like what it takes to get Hello World going. It's five lines. Five lines of code. Import the fast API class. Instantiate the class. Tell the class what your default is and tell it what you're going to return. So that's simple. 
and it's built in with asynchronous uh, support. And we run it using Uvicorn. And let's take a peek at it. So we'll fire up the Uvicorn server. Everything's going, it's happy. The startup is complete. And let's take a peek. I had this loaded. Uh, so let's refresh it. And look at that. Hi, Pineinsula. So great. We have an API endpoint. It's up. It's running. Five lines of code. Five seconds of effort. What do we get with that five seconds of effort? Well, if we go to the docs, which you saw I did not create this endpoint comes free swagger docs uh, it also has redoc available to you as well I believe it's under the redoc it is under the redoc and you get this awesome fully fleshed out uh, it's built on open api so this uh, schema is generated and it sort of tells everything and that's why we're able to easily use swagger docs um, it also means that your docs are easy to customize in line in code. You don't have to have a separate docs file. It's really cool. Uh, so let's take a look, right? We have uh, our root. It's a git. It doesn't take parameters. Uh, we expect a 200 successful response. It's going to send JSON back as the media type. And well, let's take a, let's take a peek because it gives us a free try it out button. So we don't have parameters. Let's just go ahead and execute it and see what happens. Look at that. Tells me what the curl is going to look like, where it's going, and what happened. I got a 200 back. There's my message. That's awesome. So let's go back and look at another example that uses a little bit of the Pydantic data validation things and will show us uh, something that we can play with a little bit more. So let's take a look at example two. So in this example, I'm using the Pydantic base model to create a new class called container. Uh, it's representing like a Docker container. Uh, it has a name, where the container is stored, the command you want the container to run, and maybe some optional arguments, right? So. Let's see, we are going to create this new application running. We have a endpoint that you would post to in the slash container that is called create container and it will take a JSON body uh, that needs to match the container class. And then it'll just spit the container back out. Um, in the next slide, I'll kind of explain what uh, I've used it for. And this is sort of like a very simple, like boiled down version of what I've actually used this for in production at Garden Health. So let's take a peek at this running. So we're just going to tell Uvicorn to go to our second example app, reload. Everything fires up. It's happy. Let's reload this. You'll see we get our new example in container. So let's, what do we have in here? We have create container. So container is expecting. So because we gave, we're using this, uh, these tools that come built in with fast API, it already knows the schema, it can give me some example value. So when I say I want to try it out, then I can, uh, I can do that. So let's, let's open the science. Uh, <laughs> let's open the science Docker container that is here. And you know, give it a command run. Ah, oh, well, Docker run is already going to happen. Uh, you know, we'll say Python in the science module. 
everything. Sorry, this is going to get me. Everything. And the args are going to be stuff. Let's execute it and see what we get. So we get a 200. This is what we got from the body. Here's the header. And that's expected. So what happens if you give it bad data? So let's forget to put location in. And let's execute that. What do we get? 422. Oh, no. That's a validation error. So clearly, we are missing a value. A field was required. Well, what field was it? Location. OK. It's missing a value. So let's do that. Let's put it back. Right? What happens if we just pass it an empty string? Oh, that's okay because the location is empty. Can you pass it a none? Darn. You can you cannot pass it a none. Well, that's okay. Uh it back give it a proper thing and we're happy go lucky so this is just a quick example it's nothing too fancy obviously this doesn't do much uh, we can reset the uh, the connection there and look at this you can see my failures right good logging in Ubicorn. so let's go ahead and close that so it's just a little example but I mean even this right with like data validation on something that's posting into your web application. This is, you know, less than 15 lines of code, uh, which is exciting to me because again, as I said earlier, I'm not exactly the world's smartest person. So that's why I love it. And uh, what I've used it for uh, at Garden Health, uh, we're a liquid biopsy company. We test cell-free DNA for the presence of uh, tumor DNA. We run a bunch of bioinformatics against it to screen for cancer. And in a lot of cases, we were also able to help pharma companies find participants uh, for their studies and perform like BI analysis on those studies to kind of create a report on whether or not somebody is or isn't eligible or whatever the study kind of wants them to know. And uh, what that meant for me was I needed kind of a controller to direct like these incoming requests from our, uh, our limbs system, which is our laboratory uh, inventory management system. And uh, we needed to direct those requests out to uh, Docker containers that run uh, study specific information on it. Uh, so I needed to take a request, validate its parameters, and then kick off a container using kind of the provided information about the study. Um, so some important things that uh, I had to look out for are it you know we're an FDA regulated company and everything needs to be documented everything needs to be easy to ingest for regulatory teams to make sure that we're meeting our burden of documentation and proof you know uh, so that one of the things that excited me uh, and kind of got me interested in fast api was the built-in documentation and the docs that get auto generated with no work from me uh, because i have to over document everything any free documentation is great documentation so another thing it needed to be testable uh, again we're regulated 
but so that meant that it needed to be testable yes with tests but also by maybe non-technical individuals so again swagger docs having the try it out option and letting someone be able to test a live instance of my web application see the response see the messaging really be able to understand what's going on take screenshots take videos allow us to build our burden of documentation uh, and again it really just needed to be easy because like I'm a simple guy, uh, and I had never really needed to do much with web apps other than single, you know, like simple proof of concepts. Uh, my kind of like historical skill set had been in developing algorithms uh, that were running on high performance computing systems and building system integration suites. So naturally, my first major project at uh, Garden was build this web api endpoint to take requests from this very big complicated third-party system and run our very complicated bioinformatics pipeline and it has to like basically be one level below full cdx compliance so it was a big ask and in my opinion fast api really made it work with almost no effort fast api fastly again this was just a quick overview but i wanted to show it to you and i hope you enjoyed it